Okay, so we have our first basic flex container here. And now let's take a step back and talk a bit about the principles of Flexbox so that you actually know what you're doing before we dive into more of the details of the specification. First and foremost, probably one of the most important principles to understand are the concepts of the main axis and the cross axis. And as I mentioned, the default layout is gonna be like a row. So all our children are aligned in a row here. And this is then also called the main axis. So for a default flex box like this, where you just specify display flex, the main axis is gonna be the horizontal axis here. And then the cross axis is of course always perpendicular to the main axis. So in this case, the cross axis would be the vertical axis right here, which would be like a column alignment. Now to make this a bit clearer, we're gonna go back to our showcase here and then maybe put this on full width. And then we're gonna take a quick look at the section here called flow direction. So the first example here, and this is actually another property we're gonna discuss very soon, flex direction. And the first and also the default value for this is row. So you can see the similarity to our flex box we just looked at. So all the elements are gonna be aligned in a row and the container is gonna be filled from left to right, at least on left to right layouts. If we were using a right to left layout here, like in some Arabic countries, then actually the default would be to also fill the container from the right. But for our purposes, let's just discuss left to right layouts like I have here. And for left to right layouts like this, there are other properties here we're gonna discuss very soon. But for now, let's actually think about main and cross axis. So in the case of rows here, no matter if you fill the row from the left or the right, the main axis is always gonna be horizontal here. So in this case, the cross axis again is gonna be the vertical axis perpendicular to the main axis. Now conversely, when you have flex direction column or column reverse for that matter, then you have your main axis as the vertical axis here. And then therefore the main axis of course is then gonna be horizontal here. So the concepts of main and cross axis are gonna be very important to keep in the back of your mind for what's gonna come because many of the Flexbox properties we're gonna discuss are actually gonna depend in their behavior on what your main axis is and what your cross axis is. So keep that in mind for now, but of course we're gonna go through all of those properties in detail and it's gonna be not a big problem to differentiate between main and cross axis. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the whole showcase here because it's also gonna lay out more or less the structure of this course. Now the easiest way to think about all the Flexbox properties, and there are quite a few of them, is to differentiate between two kinds of them. And the first kind are all the properties that have to do with Flex containers. And then the second group are all those that have to do with Flex items, which are of course the children inside a Flex container. So in our first example in the code you wrote, there were four flex items in that case in your flex container. And in this course, we're gonna go through all properties that Flexbox provides one by one. And we're starting with flex containers. So we're gonna talk about justify content, align items, flex wrap, align content, and of course the flex direction that you already saw. And then we're gonna move on to the six properties that are important to know for flex items which are in part useful to basically overwrite the layout from the flex container. And then also there are other properties like flex grow or flex shrink that allow you to define the behavior of the item inside the container. And then of course comes maybe the most important part of this course where we're gonna take a look at many of the different real world examples and how Flexbox actually makes it easier for you to create modern layouts, whether it be more complex layout or even very simple ones. And as I mentioned, you can always let me know if you think there's another good example to show what Flexbox can do so that you can add this to this list of examples down here in the showcase. All right, so now we're ready to start and go through all of the properties one by one. Again, if you have any questions, always let me know in the Q&A and I'm gonna answer you directly. Otherwise, of course, you're welcome to just write any suggestions or feedback you have in the Q&A as well. And I'm gonna read each one of those and we'll let you know if I can do anything to improve the course for you, for example. All right, so that's all for now. See you in the next lecture.